Okay. I'm going to see if I can get this uh, Tecumseh powered walk behind strimmer to fire up. Chap brought it in to me some weeks ago now and says he hasn't been working, he hasn't touched it for four years, doesn't know if it will go. Can I get it going for him? It's a Vector XL slash C Tecumseh driven. Um, Strimmer, for want of a better word. It's a bit of a beast, actually. Um, now, I've had a look, good look at it. The carburetor, I've tried to clean. Well, I have cleaned, but it's, frankly, it's probably gone past its best now. So I've been looking. I've got all the bits and pieces turned up, but eventually it's taken a long time. So I'm just going to show you, well, attempt to get this thing back together again. Um, this plate I took off just to see what was underneath it, and frankly, there isn't anything underneath it. Um, but what is there is the crankcase breather cover. And here it is here. That needs to go back on. And I've checked the seal. Apparently I was told by Ken, Ken Small Engines, that these tend to have the upper seal tends to go on them. This one looks perfect. Um, dirt and must. There's a bit of sponge in there, which I'm not going to touch because it looks like it's genuine. Um, but this just basically sits down on there and there's a seal there. It is sealed after a fashion um, And I think I can literally just pop that back on there screw it in place And that'll be the job done. I don't see there's anything else needs to be done to it Apart from get rid of a bit of muck maybe. Hang on Get rid of that So that doesn't do anything as such apart from being the mount as I say for the uh, the breather. So I'm going to get that back on again, if I can. Like so. Make sure the holes line up, all the cross threads are daft now, after all this time. Where are we? Okay, now that is, I believe, A seal. I'll just drop that down. So that's that cover back on, seems to do the business. Now I do remember now thinking about it, that the, the issue I did notice, because this plate will now come off, although it's still connected, would you believe, to the governor's spring. However, it will just move out the way slightly, just so that I can get a new piece of hose onto the nozzle there, onto the breather case. So I'm gonna cut a piece out The original this is the original there I don't know if you can see that so it gives me some idea of lengthwise so what I'm going to do is just cut a piece to the same length because it should obviously be the same two seconds you might hear my dog out there whining and carrying on we don't know why he does it actually so it's the same length there, like so. so that just enables me to get that in place easily rather than to fiddle around. Put it back on. See that's going to be a lot easier doing it like this way than trying to uh, do it with everything back together again. Even then there's a bit of a fiddle. Okay. There we go. 
that's better, that's fine. And so then I can put this all back together again. Where did that spring go? Like that. There we go. Okay, that's good. So we've now got a new breather pipe fitted on because the old one, as you can imagine, um, Badly, badly perished. And this plate, all this is, uh, is a plate that the cover fits onto. Now I had a devil's of a job getting the, uh, the cover off because would you believe there was a screw right up inside that you can barely see, let alone get to. Uh, that's going to be 10 mil. Goes down. Like so. Then we need to get the uh, flywheel back on. Now the flywheel actually came off extremely easily. You can see this very clean on the shaft. And what I always do is drop a bit of WD-40 down there before I try to pull them off. And I got the you've got myself all ready with my impact hammer and, and one thing or another. Got the lever underneath and it just popped off, so I was quite happy with that. The uh, flywheel itself is pretty manky, but I have cleaned it up, including the, the uh, magnets. And I did check the spark, and it's got an extremely good spark actually, no problem whatsoever. So it can all go back on. If I can make sure it sits in place like so, like so, there we go. I will need to start up my, um, I won't. right. So here's the cup. I was thinking I need to really hear if it would go, but I don't. Now that should sit in. It's got a, a tag that obviously locks it in the right place. And I'm just trying to see anywhere on the flywheel that it would show where it's been before. And I think it's there. So it can't spin like so. No. And then we're going to drive that back down in place. Yeah. Well, I think that's probably is that a nineteen. Let's have a look. Size before we even try. No, nope, I'm wrong. Try that one. Here we go. Thank goodness for impact doors, eh? Right, get that one tightened back on again. That ain't going to come off. So there's the flywheel fitted back on. Uh, and then of course we need to get the uh, coil fitted. And I'm just ever mindful of being able to get to everything when I've got to fit the new carb on. And I fit by, by doing this as such. That's not going to get in the way of anything, is it? No, that's good. Okay. when the two bits off you try and find where they all come from let's have a look we'll 
bits. Turn that around at the moment. I would have expected two like that, and at the moment can only find one. Deep joy. Hmm. Okay. Let's have another look in a minute. Yeah, a bit of an issue there. Not being able to find the right screws. I'm sure they're not going to be long enough. <laughs> Happy days, eh? Happy days. So I'll have to have a look for that. So for now, because I'm not going to get all this done in one video, that's a fact. So I'm just going to drop that down in place, just to hold it in place at the moment. And, uh, and then after that, we'll... Uh, Try and find where that screw's gone, that box. I'm sure I can find something else anyway. So, flywheel back on, key's okay. Um, so time to put the carb on. And I bought a new carb. It wasn't worth messing around. Here's the carb. New carb. New gaskets. It wasn't expensive. It took a while to get here, to be fair. It did take a while. But there's the carburetor. Nice and shiny. And it's held on by two bolts done up with Torx sockets. And I'll show you what I mean. long bolts are fitted on to the carburetor through the carburetor body and they've got torque ends so you have to it's a bit of a fiddle by the looks of this uh, yeah so you have to make sure everything's going to go around the right way at the right time like so, I believe. That's going to go on there. Okay. And as you can see, bolts go through, and then the gasket fits on to there. This is probably one of the worst videos you're ever going to see. But hey ho, I don't mind. It was going to get uh, chopped down anyway, no doubt. So there's a gasket. <coughs> Excuse me. the right one thank goodness all come with the set there it goes and obviously then need to connect the um, governor rod to there and I haven't seen to see if this is going to be the fit will be fit often or not they're never the right size and of course this one appears not to be the right size So, I'm going to stop here now, just to show you the very beginnings of all this gone back together. Um, I'm going to have to take that uh, governor rod off, or drill out the hole on here, which I'm very reluctant to do, because there's not a lot of meat there. So I'm going to catch you later on, uh, st stick with it, <laughs> I'll do our very best. You take care, bye bye. Okay, so uh, 
just so I show you this. Uh, so it's a torque socket, and it goes on to the end of the two um, mountain bolts here. And it, but I wouldn't want to put too much pressure on them, but I'll just turn them up like that, and that one as well. And that's tight enough as far as I'm concerned. Don't ask me where to tighten the new gasket in there. Um, I worked out in fact that the hole was the right size, I just had the right angle, so I didn't have to do any work on there. So then after that we have to then put on the air filter box. Now I've fitted a new primer bulb on this one, the other one was, was rotten obviously. A uh, new gasket. And what I've done here is because it's quite a weird setup, I've actually stuck the gasket in place uh, using gas cinch. I love that stuff, it's come to America. Uh, you just make sure you've got clean surfaces, um, put a very, very light film on both surfaces, leave it for two minutes so it goes off, a bit like Evo stick, uh, kind of like an impact adhesive, and then pop your gasket on it, holds it in place because it's going to be a bit of a fiddle getting this on there. As you can see now, you can probably, I hope you can see, that the two bolts butt up against the outside edge of the carburetor. And then we'll have to sit inside of the enlarged holes of the air filter. Bit of a bugger's muddle, be quite honest with you. So let's just see if I can get it on there to start off with, and then we'll go from there. Um, I'm going to leave the um, breather pipe for a minute or two. Uh, the whole idea of this, obviously, is that I don't disturb the gaskets. And all being well. The whole lot just bolt together. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Now that to me doesn't look right. There's too, far too much movement on there. And I really don't believe that's right. Although, to find the right position it seems okay. So I'm going to just wind that, wind the nut in there a minute just to see how we get on. Give me a second. So right, old fiddle job to get in there. And uh, that's going to be a Ten mil, I think. Use my favourite little. This is actually a brittle, a brittle spanner. I've had it for years. It's really handy for getting into small places. And let's see if I can get on there. I'm just concerned. I'm going to disturb the gasket, and it won't all fit in properly. Just wind it carefully and see what see how we get on. There we go. Well played the right end up so isn't it? I hope this is gonna See, it's nothing easy, is it? <laughs> I think they're a straightforward. I'm going to have to do it bit by bit, I think. There we go. Cleaned them up a bit because they were quite, quite tight. Just do it that way. You see how, how handy this little thing spanner is to get into places like this. Now that's actually on there. Um, I need to get a torch just to look in there and see if I actually made a seal. Easy to see in there actually. I think that's made the 
сила. Well, we're going to leave it like that and just see. I'll put the uh, breather pipe back on. He says. So, in theory, <laughs> the carb is back on. Throttle linkage works. Just hoping we got a decent seal there. We'll have to find out. We'll have to wait and see anyway. Um, I still can't find this boat. And I'm most perplexed because I know I saved them. And they're a weird size. They're not standard like a like a Briggs and Stratton, obviously. <laughs> Briggs and Stratton, uh, these pole fixings for the uh, for the coil. And I can't find it well, a, a boat with the same thread. I'm going to go through some stuff in a minute. I'm going to presume it's metric, but they they say never presume anything. Um, so. Airfare is back on, as I say. Now these things come also with um, a pre-filter, uh, which I bought, and I don't see the sense of the rhyme to them. But this is the genuine one, so it says. Pretty, but I can't see the sense of this. I really, really can't. Uh, what came out of it, I do know, was a piece of foam. I don't know about this at all. This, uh, I think I threw the old one away. Where's the other part of it a minute? <clears throat> yes, I sort of threw away the old one. It's a free a pre-filter. This will sit in here somehow or another. Oh, I can see, like so. What is that there? That would be too easy if that was the case. Well, there's a problem solved. I just found the bolt. <laughs> it was stuck in the air filter. Uh, I'll tighten that one up in a minute. Good, well done. So the air filter, as I say, sits on there, clips up, and then the, the pre-filter just sits inside now this is far too big so I'm just going to cut it cut it down to size I'm really pleased I found that that bolt let's see what size it was and then we we'll us tighten up before I lose it now again here we go it would help I suppose if I had the right size spanner wouldn't it and it's a uh, torx. We seem to have an awful lot of torx on this thing. Let's get this torx screwed over here. Now, whichever one I bring, guaranteed it will be the wrong size. But I'm looking at it, this one here. Whoa, right, it's first time. Yeah, look at that. I'm finding that bolt is a bit of a bonus. Let's set that gap a minute. I know you use um, cards and one thing or another, but I like to use a proper gauge. All right, let's begin. That's right, the wife just come and tell me the oven's on. <laughs> oh dear, 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 bear with me. Yeah, um, so I'm saying, I use the uh, feeder gauge. I just, um, just me really, being a bit 
So let's just uh, lock that in place first. Move it backwards. Up the way. There we go. Okay. And we'll swizzle the uh, Place, that's in place. There we go. So, ten thousand gap set with a feeder gauge. Tighten up the. And I'm sure everybody does these lawn mowers and small engines are more than capable, more aware of how to do this air gap. But yeah, that's set. It's set properly. Swing it around. There we go, good job. Put that out of the way so I don't want to lose that one. Good, so we've found that boat, which means we can go forward from here, whereas before I was going to be stuck. That's good news. Just to recap, everything's in place here. Still concerned about this. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, well, we'll see. We'll see. No doubt it's there for a reason. Uh, I need to, do I need to put it in place first? I need to put the cover on first. Let's try and put the cover on first, I think, and then we'll go from there. Okay. <clears throat> so, so, let's just... Now, I did have a huge problem getting this damn thing off because there was a, a hidden... And it was hidden. Um, hold. Holding it all together. And if I remember rightly, I had to get that right up inside to do uh, this nut here, I believe. Or was it? Oh no, this one here. I had a dickens of a job to get in there. Because all this then slots down inside here like that. Make sure I get it around the right way. Where are we? Like so, that's it, that's good. You ever notice how fiddle these things can be? There we go. That's nearly in place. <laughs> and that needs to go down in between there, like so. Like that. There, getting somewhere. That's better. So we have to find out now which nuts and bolts go where to hold this in place before we then put the fuel tank back on. I'll show you the fuel tank now. I've got the impression the fuel tank goes on the car like so. And if I remember rightly, I had a dickens of a job getting off because it has to sit on two slots there and there and there was a nut or boat right up inside there which fits onto this one here and it's a devil of a job to get to anyway we got there eventually as we normally do so let's have a look see what nuts and bolts go where shall we let's have another look and see here well there's a cover there by the way that fits on somewhere Oh, fits on there, if I remember rightly, like so. Yeah, so the cable, yeah, so the, there we go. All goes on there. I'll put that on afterwards. So that's nice and easy to do. Let's just double check the two. And I think the two bolts are these here. Yeah, they are. Okay, let's uh, make sure there's no cables trapped. This is always a favourite game. That one's clear, that one's clear. And where they all fit. So, I can see one goes in there. I might need to move everything around in a minute just to see. 
Let's see if we can get one or two bolts in the first place, like so. Um, I'm going to get an impression it will probably be. Oh dear, I'm not sure which ones. Let's try those, see what happens. Some of these have got flanges on them, I've noticed, just noticed now. Um, yeah, three of them have got flanges on. Which would mean to me that if there is a spacer, in which case I'm going to use these other ones. If they fit, which they do. interesting trying to find all the bits because I now have two small ones which I'm presuming will that will not go in there no way in which case and that would be the, the hidden one I'm thinking it goes like so which it does that's the awkward one I think the reason is this, I do remember now, this goes through the top cover. If it was just a case of tightening this up, it'd be easy, but it's not because the top cover goes over here. That's the reason with it. Oh, yes, I remember now. I remember it well. <laughs> so I got one there, one there, one there. There must be one on the other side. Um, I'll come back to you when I found it, and then we'll go from there. Right, that's back in place now. Um, that's good. Covers back on. I can leave the um, filter. I can see now. I think why it's shaped the way it is. Now that's back on. There is. There's obviously a gap through into the uh, the engine there, and I guess then that will then just force through like so. And then force it into there. I presume that's how it goes anyway. And that's, to be honest with you, that's how it's going to go. Um, like that. I'm sure I could force it in a bit more. There we are, it fits. There we go. What's the problem? No problem whatsoever. Apart from overheating it, there's no doubt. So, now to get the petrol tank back on. Now, this this is the right bugger's mother when last time I took it apart. It has two clips plastic clips there and there you can't see this one this side plus as I said a mounting hole here which is barely accessible um, but as far as getting the tank back on it sits somewhere there's a groove here somewhere there it is it sits in, down into there apparently or should do <laughs> So, and then like that, and nearly like that. That side, this side's back on. That's not to catch your fingers. That went back on easier than I thought it was going to. I've already connected up the fuel pipe, by the way. New fuel line again, new clips. Now then, gotta get said bolt back in there and I believe yes there's one or two actually they've got, they've got um, collars on them let's pump this up a minute let's just see hope you can see all this still I'm not even sure if you can see what I'm doing to be honest with you but there we go so, I don't think I took the bolt out, did I? 
as you can see what a pickle it is to get to it. At the moment, can't you see it? And it begs the question, is it really necessary? Oh, there it is there. Is it? Do you know, half of mine not to bother to put it back in. Um, what I will do though, I'll use... This is tall, to be frank with you. It's been worth its weight in gold. It's a flexible uh, socket, extension bar, I should say. And that helped me get into that carburetor. And it's been worth its weight in gold, it really has. Let me see which one of those bolts it sizes. That one, okay. This is probably going to be a once only job to get this in place. I mean, design wise, somebody was having a laugh. Here we go. Somebody was having a laugh. I just dropped that one. <laughs> hey, welcome to my world. Where that go? Like this. Um, it might be an idea to put it in with a magnet to start off with. Hang on a second. Again, another tool it couldn't be without magnets. I broke the last one. You're going to have to forgive me now. I'm going to have to fiddle around and then see. Oh my lord. I'm not sure that's even in there. No. Do I really need to put that back on? Do you know I'm leaving it off? It's ridiculous. It serves no useful purpose to man or beast. That tank ain't going to go anywhere. Let's put that here. Thing. Pull cord. Now this was really badly seized, but it comes out quite easy. A little clip here pushes out. You get all the in all the all the guts come into it, and I think it will then just sit in there. Now I think there's been problems here before because there's different holes being drilled. Those appear to be correct. And again, why use a small socket when you can use a huge one? <laughs> oh dear, dear lord, which I probably don't even have at that size. What on earth size is that? You know, no prizes, about two, five mil, if that. Oh no, I tell a lie. I tell a lie. It's not even English. Here we go. That is, would you believe, quarter inch. Oh well, there's the. That's not a huge surprise, is it? Let's use this flexi driver mine again, because it does make life a lot easier. It really does. To get into the place. Now normally about this time I used to start dropping nuts and bolts down inside the motor which means then I've got to take the whole lot apart again. Mm. That's gone in. Not right. There we go. Better. I won't tighten it right the way up until I've got all of them in. And I think there are. Ah, I don't even think that's the right one. I think it's screws. I learn. There we go, let's take that out. All the mistakes get left in because I make so many. <laughs> oh dear, 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 dear. So, what I have got here is these South Tappers. They've obviously been used before. They're not originals because they're plastic self tappers. In other words, they don't have a they're very, very coarse thread with no point on them. And it's it is an old-fashioned Phillips. 
which would make sense for the age of this machine. So I think somebody's had a few problems with this before and uh, let's see if that helps. Oh, I don't like that at all. I really don't like that. I really don't like that at all. So you see the problems I'm having already. But that's on there and then obviously this cover sits on it like so. I'm leaving that off. I'm going to mess around with this offline now. Um, the thing I have got to do is still put on this control plate which sits here like so. And again to me, life really interesting. They decide, or the designer decides that yes, we're going to make life interesting. We're going to make it as difficult as we possibly can get to. Let's all look, see, four inch again. <laughs> oh, happy days. And I can't come through that way, no. The joys of small engines. Is there such a thing? Well, I'm sure there is, but somebody somewhere will tell me what it is. Beating the impossible, I guess, is the, is the joy. Is that going in? Is it in, she said? Yes, it is. Oh, where's the other one? So this is for the control, uh, the throttle control. Because we're actually getting very close to finishing the job now, uh, surprisingly enough. Uh, well, I'm not going to try and start it tonight. It, tonight we're at half past five tonight, uh, and I don't like to upset our new neighbours. Although I think they're pretty nice people. But, um, they can wait till tomorrow morning anyway. Put the wheel in this place, I do not know. <laughs> there we go. Cool. If anybody's still watching this, by the time this, this is all um, back together, if you manage to stay with me, I would be well, amazed. I think by now I would have thought, no, no, the silly old fool doesn't know what he's doing. And you wouldn't be far wrong, actually. Um, oh, come on, ratchet won't. Ratchet. Right into the very last tight threads. Oh, dear Lord. There we go. And I just realised on this wheel here that I'm working with, this dog poo. Well, I hope it's either dog's poo or cat's poo, either which, it's not particularly pleasant. And I only just realised it. I thought it was mud. For those of you who watch my uh, stream, you'll know that life is never taken completely seriously. That's tight enough for you. There we go. There we go, that works nicely. So, air filler. New air filler. An air filler box. So I would guess that would fits in that way. in there like so good <clears throat> and then we can clip in there and when you add a maneuver it, it's a flat headed screwdriver
I think I work out on average for every lawnmower or whatever motor I do, I walk about 15.8 miles backwards and forwards, like a fiddler's elbow. There we go. <laughs> for those of you who might have heard that expression. Nope, don't like that very much. Let's try and get that in first. Yeah, it's a tight fit, mine. Ah, here we go. Yeah, it's a very really tight fit. There you go. In fact, when I took the old one out, it was quite deformed. And I can see the reason why now. It's um, been forced in there. So, I don't really like messing around too much with these. That's better. That's gone in there. That's better. So, I gave a clip on there. Something like that. Mind the dog's poo. There, how about that? That together there. I think, apart from sorting out this pool here with the boats, because I'm sure they're it's got holes drilled everywhere in it. For some reason, I should go around there more. Maybe that's a better position for it. I need to fiddle around with that. Okay, so it's all back together now. Just need to have oil put in there, plug put on, or oh, a new plug. This this is going to be a BR two LM. That's what come out of it. So that's what goes back in it again. Check the gap. That's near down to thirty. And I always like to put a little bit of um, three in one oil on the threads. Pure. It's, it's just an old habit of mine. Um, it just makes it the first tightening up easy. Make sure we don't cross thread them, of course. There we go. And I was, and I remember reading somewhere actually when you fit a new spark plug, and um, by all means argue against this. I read somewhere that so when you've got to fit a new spark plug, you uh, tighten it up. Once, back, and then tighten again. So that's what I tend to do now. I don't know, but that's tight, that's good. That's good. All I've got to do now is put the cable back on, which is straightforward enough. Um, which only sort of sits in there, as you probably see now, like so. And then the, the whole cable twists around because it's got its own life. <laughs> and. Uh, gets captured by the uh, boat there. And I'll get that arranged. So there we go. Vector XL forward slash C to Compsy motor. Uh, I wouldn't say rebuilt, but what we have done is we've uh, fitted, uh, no, we've done the, um, we got a new spark plug, we got new oil, we got uh, new uh, air filters, a uh, new um, carburetor and, and gaskets, also new fuel lines and um, other bits, bobs. I'm going to try and I'll finish this off tonight or maybe tomorrow morning because I've had enough now, it's half past five. And uh, I'll get some fuel in it tomorrow. And just see if it well, just to see if it goes. I know it's got a good spark, and I know it's got compression. Therefore, if the car were working properly, and I've got to get it right, this will now go. And the chap that owns it will be, I'm sure, delighted because he's not seen it fire up for four years. So there you go. It's um, I'm not particularly good at making these videos, and I and I do make an awful lot of mistakes. 
uh, and what you won't see on, on this video is all the mistakes, some of the bad language. Um, but I have a bit of fun anyway. And I'll move on to the next one, which is a, a two-stroke FS52 that I'm going to rebuild for my mate of mine. Um, I don't really like two strokes, but hell, whatever. You guys stay safe. Um, it's been an absolute delight and a pleasure for you. Bye-bye. <laughs>